Hey, it's Jasmine Tarani here to help you be successful in your personal life too. Today I am here with the beautiful Heather Monahan, author, speaker, and entrepreneur, and she's going to tell us a little bit about where she got to, where she is now, how she got there. Do a little deep dive behind the scenes so that we can understand and get to know what she's up to and how she created this beautiful book, The Confidence Creator, and so she can help all of us be a little bit more confident. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So tell us a little bit about what you're up to personally and professionally and currently. So currently, I am working on a course right now that I'm going to offer online because I, after writing Confidence Creator, I hear from a lot of fans of the book, what's the next thing? How can I mm-hmm. evolve more? I need more training. And I can't scale that one-on-one business, right. and it's really not of interest to me. So I decided to create a course, and I'm knee-deep in that right now. So I, my plan is to launch that right for the new year, so it'll be coming out online in December. Amazing, amazing. And so tell us a little bit about the book. Sure. So the book is a compilation of my lowest moments in my life and how I learned how to build confidence through them. And really the catalyst for that was I had a very successful career in corporate America. I was a chief revenue officer responsible for over $200 million. Oh, uh, and That's no joke. Yeah, and I had been, you know, at that same company for 14 years, had been promoted countless times, and I had just won a 2017 Most Influential Women in Radio, and I was fired just 30 days after that when the CEO's daughter was elevated to CEO. Oh, wow. So that was the catalyst that got me yeah. to say, you know what, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write a book, and instead of going back to what I'd always known, which was corporate America and that very clear path, I decided to say, I'm gonna really rebuild my confidence right now because it knows dive, you know, when I got fired. And I did that and I laid out that plan and my experiences in the book. And that's when I leaned in 100% to becoming an entrepreneur and starting my own company. So this is like the last year? It was July um, 27th, 2017 is the day I got fired. And within 30 days from that period is when I started writing the book and, you know, started doing this full time. Amazing. Good for you. And so do you have any any specific nuggets from the book that might be takeaways from when you're in those low moments? What was I mean, obviously there's a whole book out of it, but you know, a few little nuggets for us. Sure. Anytime that anyone is facing a very difficult situation, I have a lot of success with building a 30-day plan. I write about that in my book. When I got fired, it seems overwhelming when you think, "Where am I going to be in 5 years? This yeah. is my life career." So you take a step back and instead say, okay, 30 days is manageable. I like that. And you create a vision for where you want to be at the end of 30 days. Doesn't mean you know where you're going to be or exactly what it's going to be like. Right. However, you know, I want to feel confident. I want to feel passionate. I want to be excited. I want to be moving forward. So I created that vision and image and attaching a song to that's always an amazing way to really allow you to connect even stronger. I like The song Glorious. My son really got me into that. It's such an uplifting and motivating song, and it really generated a lot of positive feelings when, at a time when I was feeling really negative. Right. So I did that. I. Um, That's like neurolinguistic programming. It's like anchoring. Every time you hear something, then it puts you in a different state. Absolutely, and yeah. scent is another partner for that. So lavender for me was a way to calm myself and allow me to get really focused on what I was doing. Hmm. So between the scent, the song, and the image, it really allowed me to create that future that I wanted to move towards. And then by literally creating 30 blocks on a piece of paper, I was able to cross off every day what I accomplished. And and it sounds so rudimentary, but when you're in the thick of it and in a real negative zone, having something very specific and very achievable allows you to start seeing the positive things that are coming that you didn't know a week before were gonna happen then you become hopeful, right. then you start becoming more grateful. And all of these steps, you know, being Creating more, momentum. it gives you that momentum yeah. to really get you in a good mind frame so you start presenting yourself in a better, more confident mm. light. And the more confident you are, the more you attract it. The more you're able to achieve your goals right. because people start rising up to help you. So yeah. that's a really important part of the book. Oh, I love it. And what is, what's your thought about to do, to do versus to be? I've heard this concept recently. I don't know if you've heard of it, but like rather than creating a to-do list, is creating a to not rather than, but maybe in addition to creating a to-be list. Like I want to be 
grounded, I want to be inspired, I want to whatever, and have that be part of the goal that you're setting for yourself, have you? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say I want, I would say I am. Oh, that's good. You know, yeah. so I would yeah. own it, and a lot of times I hear people, especially women, well, I'm gonna try doing right, this. Right, don't use the word try. Right, it, it's, it's really taking ownership of, okay, if this is where I'm going and I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, those first couple of weeks, I didn't tell anyone I was gonna be an entrepreneur. Right. I was scared. Right. So I would say, well, we'll see what happens. Right. When I started moving into, I'm gonna be an author. You know, then it was right. nervous at first, but then it was ownership. Mm. I'm an author. And then mm. it was, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm creating new products. Yeah. I'm creating a vision around this theme and this, you know, goal. So really starting to own things, and that really goes back to, I have a chapter in my book about getting rid of self-deprecating words. Oh, I like that. And, and not only, you know, I'm fat, I can't do it, but instead sometimes it's, well, I feel this is a good idea versus this is a good idea. Mm. You see the power that you own in the second by mm-hmm. dropping one word, mm-hmm. feel. Right. That's it. Right, so starting to own Deciding. certain words and fire certain words from your vocabulary, mm. really that does create who you are and that, you know, I'm being, mm-hmm. but really just owning who that is. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't feel comfortable at first. Right. Frequency sells. Yeah, no, it's interesting, this idea of like fake it till you make it. How do you, what's your, how do you feel about owning things before you really believe them? Um, I've had so much success with that, <laughs> you know, so yeah. in life you're put in lanes and when right. I was a child I was the athletic one or the social one and that allowed me in my life to advance in sales and I became extremely successful in sales and then natural progression, sales leadership, okay, chief revenue officer, all that was within that lane that I allowed, you know, myself to be placed in, smashing those lanes and deciding to create, reinvent myself as an author was really hard, so I had to start saying, I am not the social one. I am creative. I am smart. Mm -hmm. I am capable. I am innovative. And really talking myself into what I knew I wanted to do but didn't know how I was Mm -hmm. going to do it because you're really scared in those moments Mm -hmm. when you completely pull the ripcord and try something new. And what did it take for you to really start believing it? Frequency sells. So one of the things I learned in media. From are you talking t- about vibrational frequency or frequency of? You are way deeper than oh, I am. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> no, frequency meaning the number of times, okay. right? So in media, one of the things that I learned. I'm like your spiritual frequency and vibration. No, I'm talking about just like numbers. <laughs> numbers, okay. right? So um, in media, there's tremendous strategy, data, and you know case studies around. I can't just put confidence creator out once on this show and I will be a New York Times best-selling author. Now, if I'm pounding that message and I'm on Good Morning America today and then you see me on Fox News tonight and you see me here right now. all of a sudden I start to pay attention. Oh, who is that? Well, you say, I know, I've heard of that girl. I know that confidence creator. This must be credible. There's something to this. Hang on, I might Google this book. Right. But it doesn't. It took like 17 times before they thought of it. Exactly. I mean, it takes at least a frequency of eight within a finite window, within a day's time. So Mm. that's why social media, all these different vehicles really allow, you know, to help bolster you to success. So it isn't one time and it's no different than when you say, I am capable. I am doing mm. this. You need to frequency, frequency sell. So sell, sell yourself, yourself the right way. Use the strategy that media is using against you. I love it. To work for you. Put it to work for you. That's good. She's good. <laughs> All right. So give us a little bit about your personal life. What's going on in that domain? So I'm engaged to oh. a wonderful man. We've been together on and off for almost nine years now. And we both met right after we both got divorced and we both have children. Um, So currently I have an 11 year old son who's amazing and we're working on him getting into middle school right now, which is a huge, huge. big deal. And my fiance has a one child who's in college now and she's doing great. And his son is a junior in high school. So we're, you know, trying to, he's really focused on baseball and a career in baseball. And we're working with him on getting into schools for college and, it's just, it's a, it's a nice time right now where things are going really well in my personal life, which is great because my work life is, it's intense. Yeah, no, it's important to have that balance. Well, any words of wisdom, any takeaways that for our audience feel like would be important or things that you really wish someone would have told you before or that you can really add some extra value? Sure. So people have self-limiting beliefs in their life. It's up to you if you decide to take those on for yourself. For example, Mm. someone said to me, don't publish this book, you're gonna get sued. And that was about them and their beliefs, their fears. 
and I decided to say, I'm going to access some people that I have on a very short list that are my cheerleaders and the yeah. people that stretch me. They're my mentoring team. And I called them and said, what do you think? And they said, all right, let's reground here. What are your goals and what do you, what do you believe in? Focus on your beliefs yeah. and don't take other people's on. I called that person back and I said, thank you for your concerns on the whole legal thing. I'm going to hope for the best it doesn't happen, but I'm ripping and running yeah. and I am launching this book. And here we are six months later, my book launched number one on Amazon, new releases. It trumped Trump for business motivation and business biographies. And I never got sued. So here's the thing. It's up to you to decide what do you want to allow for in your life? What do you want to take on? And what do you want to instead thank other people for and push back to them? Mm, and also that idea of, you know, if you were to think of the five closest people in your life and put them in a car, where are they going? Because that's exactly where you're going, you know? And so to pay attention to who are those people that you keep Oh my God, so true. I was with the CEO of Horizon Media last week in New York, which is the largest ad agency in the US, and this man is responsible for $8 billion. And we're walking down the hall together, and he said, hey, have you met Reese Witherspoon yet? I said, no, not yet. And he said, exactly, but you will. Now, some other people I could be mm. around in my life might say, well, geez, I mean, how are you going to get to her? And right. you want to be with those people that are like, yeah, of, yeah, of course. course this is going to happen. Yeah. Why wouldn't it happen? Because it's going to help retrain and reframe your thinking to allow for that same way of thinking for you. I love it. Beautiful. Well, where can we find you? And so, where, can, what can we, where can we get your book? Where can we find you? All the goodies that we want from you. So Confidence Creator is on Amazon. I have an audible version. Yes, I narrate it. It's <laughs> so amazing because it's me telling you my story, which I love. It's really powerful. I did the same with my books too. I love that. I think it's yeah. so important and really authentic to, to and genuine to do that. I have a Kindle version. I have a paperback, a hardcover. And you can find me at heathermonahan.com on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, at Heather Monahan, Twitter. She's I'm out there. everywhere. <laughs> Exactly. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate having you. Thanks for having me. Until next time. To get more information from me, check me out at jasminetarani.com.